Hackett people, so certain news event that happened this week, at least in my timeline, not sure when you're watching this video, but major AWS outage took down Fortnite, Alexa, Snapchat, and more. What was all impacted? Oh, you know, no big deal. Chat, GPT, Epic Games Store, Epic Online Services, and more. So I actually wanted to show you a bit about what happened with this and how this totally connects directly to a series that I have been considering doing right here on my YouTube channel for you. So first, let's take a look at what happened that actually brought these systems down. All right, so I'm the type that likes to go to the source. I don't know about you, so let's actually go to AWS. This is a health update that came out on Monday morning. And so this shows resolve that you can really go into the gory details if you'd like to, but let's just start up at the top here. Increased error rates, latencies for AWS services. Okay, wonderful. Services are features that rely on US East 1. But this is the thing. So we identify the trigger of the event as DNS resolution issues for the regional Dynamo DB service endpoints. Whoa. That's kind of a big deal. All right, so if you don't know what DynamoDB is, it's basically a service that can house data for all of these different services. So they might have applications that were calling data on DynamoDB. It's really important that those systems know where DynamoDB is at all times. This could have been millions of transactions going to that thing. So as it says in this alert, this was a DNS resolution issue. So what this means is if a system was trying to find DynamoDB within that region at that period of time, it didn't know an IP address to go to, but it knew a name. So with DNS, I know a domain name and I need to get an IP address for that domain. So that resolution wasn't happening and that caused the outage. Now, thankfully, AWS was able to find this, resolve it, and get it back up working in a short amount of time. But I thought about it and I'm like, you know, it's interesting that things like DNS resolution can cause such colossal problems even still today. So something I've been considering on the channel and I wanted to get your thoughts on it, uh, go ahead and leave me some comments down below. Uh, I've thought about going into how DNS works, but also what's the status of DNS? Like where are we at today in our networks today? And also where is DNS going? From the packet perspective, DNS can seem pretty simple. It can be a service that we almost take for granted. It's a request, it's a response, but there's a whole lot that goes into providing that IP address for the domain that we're looking for. And also one other thing that I'd like to highlight in this series is how fragile DNS can be and how it's really looked at as an attack vector. Check out this alert from securityweek.com. This was back in April of this year, 2025. It mentions that back in 2020, the NSA started a pilot on protective DNS. We're gonna talk about that and concluded that they were able to reduce the ability of 92% of malware attacks to deploy malware on a given network and they were able to do that with protective DNS. So what is protective DNS? How can it help us protect ourselves for up to 92% of malware attacks? And how is protective DNS different from securing our DNS? So if any of those topics track with you, stay tuned for this series. I'm gonna be releasing it progressively over YouTube and we're gonna go ahead and deep dive into DNS together. In the meantime, you know me, I can't leave you without some packet digging to do. So let's take a look at a quick DNS transaction using Wireshark. So you know what to do, packet people. Go ahead and download the PCAP and you can follow along with me. Link in the description down below. Uh, here is just, uh, just 1,500 packets. We're gonna come in here and just filter for DNS. Now there's one DNS transaction in this PCAP. And just to show you from a analyst perspective, just if we're on the client side, DNS can appear pretty simple. It's just a query and then a response. However, there's a whole lot more that goes into it. That's what we're gonna unpack in this series. But to keep it simple and high level for this video, here's our query, it goes out very simply. It's going over, this DNS is going over UDP. Pin that for later, we'll talk about that. I got my transaction ID, I've got a query that goes out. This is just one question. Uh, and if I expand this out, I'm looking for mail.patriots.in. Okay, great. Now I'm looking for a type A record. So what that means is it's an IPv4 address that I'm looking for to associate to this domain. Instead of punching in an IP address into a browser, I want to resolve its name. All right, so I see the response come back. Here's my DNS uh, query response. Here's that same transaction ID. Uh, that's one way that Wireshark can relate those two things together. It uses that transaction ID. And then I can see that same query that was asked, but this time check out the answer. All right, here we go. So now this is the response that came back. Hey, 
asker. You were asking for mail.patriots.in. Whoa, there's a canonical name. That means that domain could also be known in a different way. How? Well, the name that it also can be known at is patriots.in. If we come down here and take a look at that next response, patriots.in, this is the IP address that you're actually looking for. Time to live, this is how long you can cache it. That's how long it's gonna be good before you should look for it again. All right, so super high level. That's what this is meant to be in this uh, video. Uh, just a very simple DNS resolution. However, there's a lot going on with DNS. This is a very core system. If DNS goes down, we're in trouble, as we saw with the AWS outage. So stay tuned, Packet People. In this series, we're going to go into the weeds with DNS. Thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you again on another video.